if Verline can sweep Saudi Arabia again, starting 2024 off with three in a row, will it increase his championship odds? Well, good evening, guys, and hello, everybody. Um, yes, Verline did the sweep, as you mentioned, Josh, last year at Diria, and of course he comes into this weekend as the championship leader after that uh, fairly dominant win, you'd have to say, in Mexico a couple of weeks ago. And as we kind of trail, you have, you guys have on on various things that you've done uh, building up to that race, and we did on the show as well. We kind of trailed ahead that Porsche powertrains would be one of the front runners. Um, I don't really expect too much to change. It's only been a couple of weeks, really, as we said, since Mexico. So teams haven't had a lot of time to do too much in terms of anything, really, because a lot of the, that time has been. Uh, with the transportation of the freight. So you would think, and we know the randomness that can be Formula E, especially with the different practice and qualifying formats on each day, especially for qualifying for the two races, uh, things can be different. But got to think that um, Verline, especially, and Porsche going into this weekend will be the favourites. Yeah, I think uh, you make a good case there, Matt, that certainly Verline's got the momentum behind him at the moment. But uh, I think even if he goes really, really well in these uh, two races in Diria, we got, if you think back to, say, Sebastian Boemi in, uh, I think it was season three, essentially, he had a great run. First half of the season, one uh, series of races in a row, uh, and then had to miss a couple of races. I had a terrible weekend in Montreal, end up narrowly losing the championship to Lucas Degrassi. So I don't think just because you can string three wins together in a row, it means that uh, it's all plain sailing from there on in. And we even saw last season, despite winning two in a row and finishing second in the first race, Verline, who was leading the championship for quite a while, ended up being overtaken first by Nick Cassidy and then, of course, by uh, Jake Dennis, who ended up uh, stealing the championship under both of their noses, of course. Uh, in terms of the competitive order, uh, Porsche, they've certainly still got a very, very efficient and quick car, but we've got to remember Jaguar in the back end of last season made big gains and those gains have carried through. So I don't think we saw the best of Jaguar in Mexico. There are a couple of reasons. There was a one-place grid penalty for both drivers in Mexico City uh, of the factory Jaguar team, Nick Cassidy and Mitch Evans, and that limited their progress because overtaking was quite difficult. At Hermanos Rodriguez, it should be fairly straightforward uh, comparatively in Diria because there are a few more overtaking areas. It's not such high altitude, so the slipstream will be a bit more powerful in terms of not just saving energy but using it to overtake, of course. So... I think we're going to see the likes of Envision, Jaguar, uh, and we're also DS uh, are in a much stronger position than they were last season as well. So I think the Maserati and the DS Penske cars will be quite strong. And uh, Nissan, uh, they did take a poll with uh, Jake Hughes last year, so uh, we can't rule out the McLarens or the factory Nissans either because they've got some quality drivers there too. So uh, certainly at the front of the field, I think uh, there are quite a number of drivers that could uh, come out on top here. 